Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world today. This is Grant Cameron, and um, I have a very special guest tonight. Um, people may know my assistant, Desta, does QHHT, um, and I have a, an expert on it tonight from Florida, I believe. Uh, her name is Sarah Bruskman Cosma. And close. <laughs> close. Yeah. I, I Cosme. Always know. Cosme. Um, and so Sarah is um, going to be speaking at Paula Harris's event, Starworks uh, USA in Laughlin, Nevada next month. Do you remember exactly what date it is? November. It's November 12th through the 14th. 12th through the 14th. And um, you'll be speaking there. Jacques Vallée will be there. Um, and uh, he doesn't go to many conferences. So you'll be lucky if you uh, go there and see Jacques Vallée. He's, I think he's doing three events there. He's doing a panel. He's doing a keynote speech, and then I guess he's doing something else. But um, so Sarah will be there, and she's going to be promoting her book, A Hypnotist's Journey to Atlantis. And I'm very excited about this. And so ba basically, maybe give me a big rundown. Uh, what is a person like you doing in a field like this? And how did you, how did you get into um, the, the book that you wrote? How, what was the backstory on that? Okay, well... I am new to this stuff because I didn't study metaphysics. Um, I really didn't have religious backgrounds or, um, you know, I didn't really know much about ETs or anything like that. I was just, I just started into this field as just a regular person with a lot of problems. <laughs> and I went about searching for help for myself. And um, I had so many problems when I was younger and that led me to traditional therapy and I thought that the only way to help people was to become a therapist or a psychologist. Is that was my plan? So, um, so you I went to, Q, went to therapy. You went to QHHT. You went to like to uh, Dolores Cannon's uh, technique. Is that where you went to get help? Is that is that how you discovered it? No, no. Oh, In okay. the beginning, I just went to tra traditional therapy. Okay. My parents put me in traditional therapy okay. because I had so many issues when I was younger yeah. and okay. um, none of them seemed to get better with therapy. Yeah. And that's what led me to go to college to become a psychologist because I thought that was the only way to help people. I didn't know that there were other modalities. Wow. And when I went to college, something really crazy happened to me it was like two months after I started college I went home to my family's house and there's this mirror that you can see as you go through the house and I looked at my reflection and I noticed something that while I was away I had forgotten to have all of these problems that had plagued me for years I had spent like 10 years in therapy and I never healed myself until all I did was change my thoughts and I thought, oh my gosh, all I did was change my environment and change my thoughts. And I literally was able to change my whole life because of that. So I never thought anything of it. Who was it going to talk to about it anyway? And I continued. I, I graduated um, with my undergraduate degree. And then I got an internship before going to graduate school, where my job was basically to <clears throat> give everybody their medication <clears throat> excuse me, and counsel them. And I learned so much about these different techniques and these medications. And I was so gung ho. I mean, I've always had this deep desire to help people. And as soon as I started working as a counselor in this place, basically drugging people, it didn't take me long to figure out that for me, everything I learned was a lie. I mean, here I thought I was so gung ho. I'm going to help all these people. This technique is going to work. These medications that I've learned so much about are going to help these people. And no one got better. There were a few suicides. And I just thought, is this all there is for people? I just thought there must be something better that I could do or learn to help people. So I quit. I didn't become a psychologist. Eventually, I became a hypnotist. And I started with lose weight, quit smoking and past life regression. And right away, I noticed that there was something about doing a past life regression that someone could heal themselves with just one session. So I thought I need to learn more about this because I, I really, it's important to me to do things at work that help people. So I studied with Dr. Brian Weiss and I got good at his method and I did that for many years. 
And then I found Dolores Cannon. And so I studied her method, got really good at that, worked my way up from a level one to a level three. And then before the quarantine, I was traveling the world with her daughter, Julia Cannon, and I was assisting in the classes. So that's basically my intro to QHHT. But I had no idea I was going to write a book. None, no idea at all. I don't consider myself a writer or anything like that. And what happened was I needed a subject or somebody I could hypnotize and bring this video submission to this level three class I was taking. And I didn't want it to be a paying client because I knew that people from the class would be watching this. And I just thought, I'll ask somebody who's not, you know, not into any of this stuff that wouldn't care, would never see these people or just wouldn't mind, you know? And I don't know why I asked my friend, Jen. Jen and I had been friends for about 10 years. Our kids were the same ages. We sat after school almost every day and watched our kids play on the playground. And she was a teacher at the school. She was not somebody you would ever think would be into spirituality. In fact, it almost seemed crazy to ask her if she would be a subject for me for this class I was doing because, and I was so nervous to ask her because it has to deal with past life regression. So QHHT that was invented by Dolores Cannon, basically what it is, is it's like a journey inwards where you really look inside yourself and you can find out who you really are, your true purpose, and you can even heal your body. And Oftentimes you go to a past life in the beginning of the session to uncover a lot about what, what possibly is ailing you, you know, in your current life. So this, I told Jen all about this. And I thought she was going to think I was crazy because we had never discussed spirituality. And I, I knew that she had never read a Dolores Cannon book, or I know she did not believe in extraterrestrials either. So this was a stretch. <laughs> to see if she would do this with me. And she looked at me and it shocked me because she said she had been looking for something like that because she had this brain condition called pseudotumor cerebri. And basically it was like the swelling in her brain that was wrecking havoc on her body. It was caused, causing like severe headaches and there was a great risk for a stroke. And she was working care really closely with this team of specialists at the University of Miami. And they told her there's no cure for this, but you can stay on this heavy duty medication. So she was pretty thrilled at just the thought that maybe this could be healed in her session. And after our first session, it was completely healed. She went back to the team of specialists and they said, that's impossible. We don't know how this healed, especially if you weren't taking your medication, we're just gonna consider it a medical miracle. But what happens in a QHHT session and why these sessions are so popular is that the body's just a messenger. So the body's just literally helping the client by sending a message. And once the message is understood, it can instantly be released and healed. And people heal themselves all the time in a QHHT session. But anyway, what happened in our first session was that Jen regressed to a past life where she was a princess in this place called Lemuria. And this is somebody that had no knowledge of Lemuria or Atlantis or anything like that. And she was taken as a prisoner by the Atlanteans and held in a prison for 60 years. And she found out in this session that it was our mission her mission and my mission to uncover all this very important information and share it with the world, that the world desperately needs it. So after the session, I honestly didn't think much about it. I thought, well, that's a really interesting session. I just thought, well, let's get together again and find out more about this information. So we decided to work together again and pull all this information that was so important for the world to hear. So I regressed her and I, I expected her higher self to take her back to the beginning of that life where she um, was a part of that society, the Lemurian society. That's what I expected. Little did I know she did not go to that lifetime at all. The beginning of the story that her higher self 
or I guess they wanted us to uncover was not from the beginning of that Lemurian story. It was the beginning of when she was a commander on an extraterrestrial ship coming to earth from the first time for the first time. Now, this is somebody who did not know if she believed in aliens. She did not read any Dolores Cannon books. So all of a sudden she's remembering this lifetime where she was this commander on an extraterrestrial ship coming to earth for the first time. We were both pretty surprised. We both thought, okay, all this information that's so important for the world, what could it be? It must be about Lemurian Atlantis. No, <laughs> it was a lot more than that. So we, we realized that this whole story was so important in its entirety. And um, it was really fascinating to learn what it was like for these ETs that came and they crashed their ship and they, they knew that Earth was their backup planet and they were colonized Earth. Um, so fascinating. So we, we got a lot of that information and then this crazy phenomenon started happening in my office. Multiple clients started coming, recounting similar memories. At first I thought, this is a really weird coincidence. All these other people describing their extraterrestrial ship crashing. And, and then not only that, either they were talking about that in their sessions under hypnosis and remembering these lifetimes, which I'm going to share a few clips at the conference because it's really fascinating just to see how this was happening. This, I won't call it a coincidence, this phenomenon. Mm -hmm. And they were also coming and they were sharing information about their lifetimes in Lemuria and Atlantis. So I started to realize, and I was told multiple times by the higher self that I needed to write this and I needed to get this information out. Jen also wrote a book and her book is called Child of the Universe by JLF Sullivan. And I put my information into this book called A Hypnotist's Journey to Atlantis. As we were uncovering all this information, another strange thing started to occur. We realized that we were repeating history and what is going on now. So not to be too controversial, but because I'm talking about a virus in Atlantis, there was a virus in Atlantis and it was killing so many people in that place. And we were uncovering this information in 2018, not knowing this was going to have so much relevance now, but I wondered why would the Atlanteans who claimed to, who Jen remembered coming to Lemuria, why did they want to come to Lemuria? They were so advanced. What would they want from this, you know, this civilization that had this matriarch and it seemed less advanced than the Atlanteans were. And the reason why they came to Lemuria is because of this virus. Now the Atlanteans didn't know how to control this virus. They had tried many different things, but they noticed that the Lemurians were not getting sick on this um, continent of Lemuria, which was a big place they didn't get sick because they had this special technology that they received from extraterrestrials and it kept them from getting sick. They would have you know, pain or discomfort, a lot of pain when it came to childbirth and stuff like that. And they used herbs and things like that, but they wouldn't get sick. So the Atlanteans were able to see this and they came to Lemuria wanting this technology that the Lemurians had been given by the extraterrestrials that founded that area basically, that colonized there. And the Lemurians couldn't give it to the um, Atlanteans because it was something that they couldn't move. They couldn't give it to them. Plus it was very sacred to them. So they said no, which led to the destruction of their continent because the Atlanteans used these atomic like devices and were able to create this huge massive tidal wave that many of my clients recount being there when that tidal wave destroyed their whole um, land. And, and then moving forward, 
one of the reasons why this is so important for this to come out now is because we're doing, we get the opportunity to do things differently because humanity doesn't evolve in a straight line. It evolves in cycles as I've learned through all these sessions. And so we're back at that point again, and we get this opportunity to do things differently. And we are, we're doing a great job. I keep hearing in these sessions. I mean, it might look like doom and gloom everywhere, but I hear that we are advancing and making great strides and we're doing great and we are ascending basically. So I don't, when I'm communicating with these beings, I just hear how great we're doing. It's quite the opposite of what other people might, might be hearing, you know, from the TV, <laughs> but. Wow. Uh, let, let me, let me flesh out a few things here. Um, how many sessions were done in terms of gathering all the material that you did with your friend? Um, with Jen, it was, it took us about two years. Is that right? So you, you almost followed the pattern that Dolores had done because she did the ones with, uh, you know, that she'd go from one client to, where she was do, doing with um, the, the guy, that was the, the future, where she would, yeah. one client would leave and the next client would come and take, take over. So it was that kind of thing where you mentioned like these people, how many of these people would come in the office? Like how many people put the story together? Was it, you know, six so dozen? So many. Oh no, way more than that. So many, it just kept happening. And then I could feel how divinely planned this all was, but there was no questioning it after a while. And just like what happened with Dolores, the same thing has been happening to me continuously because I'm writing a new book now and Jen, my subject, my client for most of the book, it, the Atlantis book, she left and she went to Hawaii. She basically wanted to go back home or close the closest place to where she lived in Lemuria. And I thought, Oh no, you know, I want to keep working. Yeah, yeah. And she kept talking about this person named three who had all this knowledge from a different time period. And I got this new client and, um, at the end of the session, he said, I am three. Wow. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so you, you, you worked with Weiss. He worked, didn't he do the Michael Newton stuff? Um, no, I worked with Dr. Brian Weiss. So he did yeah. just regular past life regression okay. therapy. Because I had but, worked, I thought it was Weiss was doing, uh, he was working as well on the, the Michael Newton. Because I'm a big fan of Michael Newton, who did the life between lives and all that kind of yes. stuff. Which is uh -huh. sim similar. Uh, that, it is. that was one of the big, I had about maybe four big events in my life. That was one when I actually stumbled into a lecture that Michael Newton was, was giving. And it was like, wow. like, you know, it was like for two days, I couldn't think. So you're talking about this thing being, and, and Michael Newton would talk about this, and Dolores would talk about this, that this is not an accident. The book's not an accident. The people coming in are an accident. So is, is this like a pre-life contract uh, where people all agree to come in and play this role and, and put this together? Oh, oh my gosh. Yes, definitely. I had no idea either. I had no idea. I moved to the Keys just because I wanted to move somewhere warm. I had no idea that I'm in a very close place to where this one uh, island was off of Atlantis. I had no idea there was a reason for me to come down here. Just like I had no idea that I've basically written the story before. <laughs> wow. I wrote, apparently, according to clients or my subjects, <clears throat> I've written the story before but the remnants of it are totally lost. So I'm back here again wow. to share it again. Do you feel honored that you get to play this role? Like I always tell people to, if you realize what's going on, you realize you're in the Super Bowl of all stories that, you know, some people can be poor on, you know, and untouchable in Calcutta and spend their life in a, in a junkyard looking for something valuable enough to sell for food. And we got to play these incredible roles. Do you feel honored by this whole thing of being into this, this this whole thing that you're doing now I uh, yeah I I can't really believe it honestly <laughs> it's pretty amazing I and, mean it's just taken off and you mentioned higher self and you mentioned we can you explain that from people that may not know as to where's the material coming from because I I wrote a book called contact modalities where we get into what you're doing and what other people are doing how they get in the field so explain the, the sort of the idea of the we, because you always hear when you're getting information, it's, it's never I, it's always we right. are asking you to do this weird. And, and then you talk about higher self. Can you explain for people 
where you believe this material is coming from, how it, how it comes to you? Sure. So in a QHHT session, I basically regress the client to a deep enough state where I can access this part of them that's all knowing, all loving, and knows everything about them and is also connected to source. So basically, this part has been described to me as the part of a person <clears throat> that never fully incarnates. So there's a part of each person that kind of um, watches from the other side. And that's the part that I speak with. But when I'm speaking with them, they never speak as in I, they always say we, because as I've gathered, they're a collective of beings and oftentimes they're ETs as well. So I was curious about that. How can ET be a higher self? And they have said that they are, it's all one because we are ETs basically. That's why people have so many memories of being an extraterrestrial because we're one in the same. Wow. You see, it's almost the concept I use the concept, remember who you actually are. You're not the you're not the you're not the actor on the stage, you're playing an actor on the stage. You are yes. actually or or Deepak Chopra would say you are the silence between the words. You you are not the words, you are not all this kind of stuff. So you, you're getting that and talk about the oneness because I uh, uh, you, I don't know how much you've done in UFOs, but I've done a lot in the UFO thing. And I believe that's the number one message that they're bringing out is this oneness oh. message. And you, you've I'm, got the same thing. Oh, yes. And I'm so glad you brought that up because this is the message I get all the time is they, when I am say yeah. they, I mean the higher self of a client will say, and it's the same, same higher, it's a collective, it's one. We're all one with this universal uh, consciousness. Yeah. That's all, all knowing. They say what's really important for humans right now is to understand who we are and why we're here. And who we really are and why we're here is we're really an ancient grouping of beings that has traveled from planet to planet to see what the next and the next will bring and to further this experience so that we may all benefit one another and never be alone and to keep our energy going. And they say it's important for us to understand what we're really connected with that we've done this before so many times. We've lived on other, other planets and experienced the whole evolution of that planet, then traveled to another planet and done the same thing many, many times before. And we're just furthering each thing. Wow. The other thing you mentioned that I sort of picked up on was the idea of the wave. I mean, I've seen the wave. I've talked to major researchers who've seen the wave. A lot of experiencers see the wave. You have, you have that phenomena where people see this it's, it's a big thing in the UFO field where people really don't understand, but they just say this giant wave. And so you think that goes back to Lemuria and, and this, this what happened there, that these people may be from Lemuria? Well, possibly. You never know because it might be different for each individual, but many people remember that wave. And the reason why that wave is so important is because it was created with these the special technology that the Atlanteans had, it wasn't a regular wave and that it didn't recede. And in fact, it destroyed the whole land. And it was, it was confusing for the people that lived in Lemuria. They didn't quite understand what happened. And I think for a lot of them, it's important for them to understand now, just so they could finally release that trauma. I've learned through so many sessions that many of us are back again right now from those lifetimes because this is the lifetime that we're here to release this trauma in. And the opportunity is available to us because we're being so triggered with everything going on that we get this opportunity to look inwards and use those triggers to release this trauma. One, one channeler had actually, I don't know if you, Paul um, Selleck talked about the fact that what he believed was happening now is that the all that we have papered over in fear is being brought to the surface and until you bring it to the surface you have you can't deal with it it's being brought to the surface so we can deal with it and then, so I, it's all the same sort of message coming through and it I'm, is. I'm very encouraged by by what you've gotten and do you think the book was you think the book was you're being helped with the book in terms of um of course you would be in, in terms of being given the sort of the the witnesses the people that were involved and that's one of the other things I looked at was channeled books. How many people actually believe that they were told to write the book, that, that they, they, couldn't, they, they couldn't do anything else. They would try to avoid it, and then they'd be dragged back into it again. And so this life purpose, you think that is, you, you already mentioned that, but can you maybe elaborate a little bit 
on this life purpose that you're doing this and maybe talk about your next book. What, what's, what, where have they got you going next? Well, one thing that's really interesting is I didn't want Jen, my subject that I wrote this book with to read any material or to get any influence from anybody else. Because to me, I really wanted to make sure this was valid information and I didn't want her to be influenced. So I wouldn't let her read any Dolores Cannon books <laughs> until we were done, <laughs> just in case, you know, something would stick in her subconscious or something. So when we were done and she was um, putting the final touches on her book and I was just finishing mine, I gave her my Dolores Cannon books and I said, go ahead, you can read them now. And she was so amazed. So anyway, she called me a couple of days later. She just poured through them because she couldn't believe the similarities that she had uncovered, you know, to what Dolores Cannon had uncovered. And she called me and she said, Sarah, you're never going to believe this. And I thought at this point, I think I'll believe anything. Yeah. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> and she says, I realized something. We picked up right where she left off. And so she had showed me this, this um, clip in the, in the book, I think it was convoluted um, book two, where Dolores says, I'm going to publish this book anyway, but maybe someone will find the missing piece to this. That's right where we picked up in one part. So I put that quickly in the book, but I know that so helped. I don't really know why me. I know I, I planned that, I guess, you know, before, and I, that I just can't, you know, it's hard to, I, I didn't know that I was going to be, you know, sharing this information, but I do know that I feel really passionate about helping other people. And I feel passionate about, you know, helping people understand what I know, because if you do what I do and you work with these people every day, you realize that there's absolutely nothing to worry about. We get so caught up in our day-to-day -day life, but we're so helped. We have so much help. And they speak through my clients all the time, telling them that, you know, just ask for help. We're here. We want to help you. We get bored if you don't ask us for anything. You know, the universe is there to help you and everything looks good. I never hear the opposite. <clears throat> it, it almost looks like you're the new Dolores Cannon where you picked up where she <laughs> left off. Are you, uh, is it, does it look like you're going to be doing book after book after book that, because that's what happened to Dolores. I think it was just these people kept coming. And yeah. provide her the next material and she'd write it up and more people would come. And do you think that you're going to be doing what's your what's your second book? I don't think you talked about that. What's what's your next? Well, it's not done yet. It's almost done. So I probably shouldn't tell you the title yet, but it's really fascinating. Same thing happened. I just um, I was first working with Jen before she moved to Hawaii yeah. and we thought we would we thought, well, basically they talk, took us to her past life in the seventies where she was uncovering this information before. So basically in my hypnotist journey to Atlantis, it starts out in her memory of this one lifetime in the seventies where she's uncovering all this information about Atlantis and Lemuria, but she was called crazy. It was too early for that information. And she was put in a mental facility and she was lobotomized. And she eventually killed herself. So we started by going through that, or they took us there. I learned better than to lead my clients anywhere. <laughs> they're led with wherever they're supposed to go. So that's where we started off. And I uncovered all this information that's so fascinating about different places like Mars is really interesting, the Sphinx, um, underground tunnels, and just um, kind of stuff like that. And that should be done in a couple months, I think. Wow. So it's a, it's a continuation of what you're doing now, like the continuing the story in terms of what, right. what, what's happening. Okay. And and you're, you say you live in Florida. So I was a big fan when I was actually in the 1970s. I actually went to um, um, Virginia Beach, Virginia, to the Edgar Casey facility when I was a young kid. And uh, of course, he talked about Atlantis. And there was actually a guy lecturing on Atlantis when I was there one evening. And so they talked about the uh, off the coast of Florida. Is that where you believe Atlantis was? Is that, does it fit into the Edgar Casey stuff where they're talking about the Bimini and this, this area there where that, is that where you believe Atlantis was? Well, Atlantis was really large. It went um, all the way towards, uh, you know, Egypt because okay. 
from what I've learned from clients is Atlantis was close to Florida and, and Bimini, but also went all the way to Egypt. And there was like this lone sandbar that you could walk to from Atlantis to the Sphinx. And the Sphinx was like the outpost of Atlantis. It's kind of like the uh, thing you would see as you enter into Atlantis. Um, but it was very large. And what's really interesting is I was trying to find out about the Bermuda Triangle. Why do people, you know, get lost in, pe in uh, people's equipment, you know, um, go haywire. And they were saying that that's because some of the technology is still buried under, you know, the ground deep with it underneath the ocean there. And so if um, certain things go haywire, it can lead a person to go literally bump into a different dimension. So it would be the same person, just a different version of your life, because apparently it seems like we each have different versions of our life anytime we make a different decision. But this is the one we're focused on right now. But a part of us will experience a different version of our life just to get all the, the experience that it can. So we're so multidimensional that also, you wouldn't have that experience happen to you over the Bermuda Triangle if you didn't have a contract for that. So it's not something you have to worry about per se. Um, talk, talking about contracts, I mean, uh, when, you're, when your clients come to you, are they coming about health issues and stuff? And then they get talking about uh, Atlantis and, the, and start filling in the story. And are they helped by the things that they originally came there? Because I'm sure they didn't come there to talk about Atlantis, they didn't even know that this, this is where they were gonna go. They, yes, they never knew that. And they would just be regular clients. My clients usually come because they wanna know something about their life or they're curious about a health issue. Most of my clients come for those reasons, or maybe they're curious about a relationship issue. Um, and they would be unsuspecting <laughs> and then they would be regressed and I would not lead them at all. I did not know where they would go, but so many times they would go to past life in Lemuria or Atlantis, but it was during that same time period because it seemed like those civilizations spanned for like a, maybe over a thousand years, but I was reporting on the very end of those civilizations this time around. I know there were other cataclysms I've learned, but I was just set up by the universe to report on that. And I just go with it. <laughs> That's a, it's absolutely fascinating story. You're talking about um, leading. And that was one of the questions, I guess you, you're a level three, so you would know this. I mean, you're going to get a lot of people who are going to say, oh, these people are being led. Hypnosis doesn't work. Right. Can you talk to all those, those various things that people bring up? And to me, they're basically like skeptics who um, have an opinion on yoga and they've never done yoga. They just have this sort of, they picked it up somewhere and they figure they logically can argue with you. So go through that, that whole thing about leading and whether hypnosis works, what is hypnosis and these kind of things. Sure. Well, in QHHT, you never lead a client. So you basically ask them to go where they're supposed to go, the most important place that they're supposed to go. And you don't suggest anything or lead them in any way because you want their higher self to take them where they're supposed to go. It's all led by their higher self, by their spiritual team. And it's so divinely planned when a person comes in for a session. I know this because I had this one client and this is how all contracts are, I believe. I had this one client and she was going through a hard time in her life and she would see the numbers 1974 in a book and she would open the book it'd be like 1974 and she had an apartment number 1974 well that was one of her questions and her higher self said that was to show her how planned the session was because that's my birthday i'm 47 so uh, i was uh, like oh my gosh you know i learned that these are all set up by the universe and these contracts that we make before we come in to have certain things or interact with a certain person they're so set up it's so planned. It's pretty funny. But anyway, to go back to your question, um, hypnosis is a great tool. It's also used by investigators. So there's a huge woo-woo to aspect to this. It's very spiritual, definitely. But it is also used by scientific communities. You could research um, memories through the use of hypnosis. 
basically what hypnosis actually is, is focus concentration. And it's an amazing tool because a person is basically just focusing inwards. And when you do that, when you quiet your mind just a little bit and you're able to go inwards, you can learn so many things about yourself. And hypnosis doesn't feel like anything. It's that same state that you notice when you wake up in the morning and you still have access to your dream. In that state, you can feel very much awake and aware, but you also feel as if you're always going to remember that dream because it's so fresh in your mind. Then you wake up all the way and you realize that you, hey, I wasn't awake, was I? That, that's the theta state. It's as simple as that. But in that state, just like you had access to your dream, you can have access to all this information. And the information is everywhere right now. In fact, I think this is interesting. Back when Dolores was doing her work, and even when I started doing this type of work in 2009, doing past life regressions, my, the brains of my clients were different. And when Dolores would regress somebody, they would often feel that they needed to be wake, you know, woken up at the end of the session. They would feel amnesia and not remember the session. So this is interesting because our brains have evolved. So now you can be in very deep states while feeling awake and aware. But that's very exciting because you can make changes quickly now, more so than ever. And healing happens so instantly nowadays because both sides of the brain can agree on something. I hope this is making sense. <laughs> I'm using yeah. all these hypnotist terms, but um, basically it's exciting that our brains are evolving because we can really tap into this higher self portion of us easily. In fact, your higher self can come out of any person at any time. Maybe if they're giving somebody else advice, and all of a sudden, the stream of consciousness that's all wise and all knowing just seems to flow through the person. And maybe your, your friend looks at you and says, whoa, can you repeat that? That was really wise. <laughs> and you think, oh my gosh, I don't even know what that was. You know, it, that was your higher self. That's how it communicates. But instead of communicating to give advice for somebody else, it gives you advice. That's basically what it feels like in a session. <clears throat> I, I do a lot on neurology and consciousness and stuff like that. Where where do you believe the the memory? Do you go into the idea of the the akashic field that you're pulling stuff out of the field that everybody has access to the field? Is that basically yeah? Where where is memory? Where is the brain? What's the activity of the brain? Because a lot of people will figure it's just the brain making up stuff, but uh, no, it's actually not even part of the brain. You're tapping into this field of consciousness, universal consciousness, basically. So many people can have the same memories and and in terms of um i i once had tried to have a michael newton session and it didn't really work can everybody be hypnotized is there ways that you can bypass people who will say oh you can't hypnotize me i'm you know i'm very left brain you're not gonna you're not gonna get me can everybody be hypnotized everyone can be hypnotized if you feel that feeling when you wake up in the morning and you can still remember your dream then you can be hypnotized. Or if you can relax, you can be hypnotized. Anybody can be hypnotized. It's very easy. This method that Dolores created is very, very easy. And I personally love it when people tell me they <laughs> that didn't work before because I love challenges. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll, have, we'll maybe have to do a session because uh, my assistant <laughs> does. I also have another um, lady. Maybe I can ask you that question. I have a, a, a practitioner in Edmonton, Canada, who was one of the people who had the experience, maybe you've had it or had one of your clients, is this experience. I had one who was a near-death experience, woman who got thrown off a motorcycle face first into the concrete, uh, and then this uh, QHHT practitioner in Edmonton, and then a guy who was on a float tank. So they're all using different methods, and they all had the concept that everything in the universe is absolutely perfect. It's exactly the way it's, it's supposed true. to be. And, yeah. and so you, you've had that experience as well. And that's something when you when you bring it up to people, they go, get out of here, like, forget it. And, but when you hear three people all coming from different aspects and the one guy, he was so embarrassed when it came to him, he didn't even tell his family. He said, this, this doesn't make any sense at all. He, he, and he secretly told me the story. And then I got these other two people and I put them in, you know, I had a, a panel and they all came on and told the same story. So you had the same experience where that's your impression of things that, that because people get very frustrated now it's like the world's going 
you know, crazy. And I always say to them, well, this idea of contract that uh, mm -hmm. you, uh, if, if it's reincarnation is a fact, then you chose to be here at this time in this place in the middle of whatever mess you're complaining about. And maybe you're here at this time in this place in the middle of this mess because you came here to do something. And it's right. the idea that everything is experience. Would you say that, that everything is, is experience and learning and their concepts of good and evil? What do you look at with, with that? Because a lot of people will claim, especially with aliens, there's good aliens and then there's evil aliens. There's race, good races and bad races and stuff like that. So where right. do you go on terms of uh, the, the concept of good and evil and this idea that everything is working out the way it's supposed to be and that we're, we're doing what we're, we're, we, can, we came here to do? Right. Um, I'm glad you asked because I have only gotten that everything is in perfect divine order, yeah. that everything is perfect. There is no bad. There's no bad experience, even an experience or a lifetime that you feel was terrible or that you failed or it was tragic. That benefits you in so many different ways for your soul's expansion. And this is what they've told me is going on right now. I'll just share it with you because it's interesting. Yeah. So they said, when, when we came, and I say we, because these, this is our collective memory, not just other people's memory. When we came to see this planet and colonize this planet, this fear virus snuck in. And this planet was not supposed to have that fear virus. This was supposed to be um, like a, another really uh, special planet full of joy and love and, and not the fear, but it snuck in almost like a virus. And it was not what they intended for this planet. So they were going to, going to scrap the whole experiment, but it started growing on its own. So anyway, they let this experiment go and just to see what would happen. And the fear brings a great element to our 3D existence because there's so much duality. So anyway, fast forward to now, one of the things that we're doing as a collective right now is we're getting all this chaotic energy and we're bringing up this chaos so that we can shed a layer of this fear as we ascend in this uh, ascension timeline. So this is great. What we're going through now is absolutely what we're supposed to be going through right now. We're releasing all of this right now. And so many are, people are here for this lifetime, especially because we can release so much and, you know, just um, really attain so much in this lifetime. <laughs> wow. Do you, do you think that I always sort of make the hypotheses that you and I and a bunch of people may have had an agreement before we came here? Okay, you do this. We're going to have this interview. You do that. And and because you seem to show with yours this idea that all these people would come with the same story one after another, almost like it was all planned before you came in, that they would all, all everybody would gather together. It looked like it was happening by accident. You have these synchronicities, but it, it's... It, and maybe you can look to that. I, I always think, you know, is, is there an accident about anything? Like people want to believe this random, it's just a random universe rather than a pattern universe and that we're, we're planning it. So can you talk about some of those things in terms of? Sure. Well, I've heard, you know, that we also have free will, mm -hmm. but we plan certain things, certain points in our life. Yeah. And it's so orchestrated. I'm sure we plan to meet together tonight. <laughs> we're like, okay, tonight we're going to talk. <laughs> and we all do that. We plan to meet so many people. A lot of times it's people that we know from other lifetimes. And it's funny that people can just look familiar to us. We don't really know why, but so many times we choose to meet them again, whether it's just for a brief moment or spend some quality time with them again. And I know that there's also free will as well, but that makes this life, this 3D experience interesting because it's all about the experience but we're so taken care of. There's no death. There's nothing bad that ever happens to you. And you were saying, um, do I get anything about good aliens versus bad aliens? I've never gotten that any aliens were bad, even if their tendency was not like a good tendency, there's still a purpose for that. I haven't ever had somebody say in a session, be careful of aliens <laughs> ever. <laughs> yeah, to me it just doesn't make any sense that because to me it's like er, ever everybody's an etheric being playing i like shakespeare said all the world's a stage all the men and women and aliens are but actors we have our entrances and exits right. and so it's not there everybody's just a, an etheric being and they're playing a role and there are everybody is like jesus said 
all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Everybody has good and evil. And it's basically your belief systems that affect you. So if you get brought up with right. bad belief systems, then you follow those belief systems, but you're just an ordinary human being and you learn from it or you don't learn from it. And, the, and then the idea that you maybe can go to is this idea that Michael Newton, I was big on Michael Newton before I saw Dolores Cannon stuff, but that was the thing where you and I write the script. So that's the free will part is that you decide, oh, I'm going to go in, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, I want to, I want to write these books, I'm going to fill it, finish, you know, you start it before, I'm going to do it again, and stuff like that, and according to Michael Newton, the 7,000 people, he said, everybody, they, they get asked one question, so how did it work out? Because you planned it, you wrote it, you wrote the script, yes. and you can't say, you know, Hillary Clinton, and my mother-in-law, and the dog ate the homework, and all this kind of stuff, they're going to go, time out, time out. it's got nothing to do with anybody out there, it's got to do with you planned this, and you yes. came in to do this kind of stuff, and people will say, and Michael Newton said, everybody says the same thing. They all say, I could have done better. Oh, I forgot to do this. Mm -hmm. I was going to do that. And so I, I, it's, I think the way I see it, based upon what you've got following up on Dolores, and it does look like you're sort of following Dolores's uh, footsteps in terms of putting out that material and Michael Newton. And now you'll see, you'll see now with the UFO stuff, the government has figured out this consciousness thing, that there's this consciousness connection to this whole thing that it's not as nuts and bolts as people think it is. So wow. I, I sort of agree with you. I think we're sort of on the edge of this great awakening that when people suddenly realize it's not a nuts and bolts universe, it's reincarnation and we came here to do something, I think uh, the world will shift. And, and even like UFOs, I mean, I was in it for many years and it, we always used to say, and now the government's never gonna disclose. And then there was one article in the New York Times in 2017 and that's what the flip that you're sort of talking about this consciousness flips and suddenly everybody believes that and they go, yeah, I knew that already. And, right. and it moves right. and almost like gay marriage or something. People fought it for years. And then when it right. happened, it wasn't even a story. I mean, right. said, yeah, okay, whatever, you know. And, and so I guess we're maybe no different than any other social or political movement. It's not that because we're right or because we've got a good idea that everybody should shut down the world and, and follow us we still right. have to get our message out that's our job that you know just like every other social movement they had bad times nobody listened to them they got ridiculed and i think that's what you and i are doing so i appreciate the work you're doing because it, it's fascinating stuff especially when you get into this um this uh, whole idea of the synchronicity of all these people who didn't come to talk about atlantis all appear in your office <laughs> and start, start telling this story and that's where you get this idea that i have so many times with people who have written books and stuff is that it's all it's all like planned you know we're it's all planned yeah there's really nothing i need to do it writes itself for me wow do you do do you do it by online or do you just do in your in your um dolores cannon's qhht is supposed to be in person yeah 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 who knows so, if that will change yeah i know i think that Desta had mentioned that as well so you you are you are we full with clients? I mean, I guess every well the Atlantis people are now in Florida. And they, <laughs> <laughs> there are a lot of people from Atlantis in Florida. That and that may be part part of the pattern as well that they're playing the role. Do they feel do they feel honored? Do they know what's what their part in the, in the story that you're telling? All these people? No, no. Um, I ask them later. The ones that I use for my book, I ask them if I could just change their name and yeah. just. I only but use so, a few. So examples. they do know that they're part of this big story. That they're not the only one that's talking about it. Oh <laughs> yes, I tell them after the session. Well, guess what? I've heard this a lot of times because when I was writing my book, and all these people started coming, they didn't know I was writing this book. So I would tell them, you know, you're not the only one that feels these that feels these things that remembers these same things that you recounted in your session. And then I would tell them I'm writing a book and I use that little clip and I'll change your name. And wow. hey, they let me. What, what does Dolores's daughter say? Have they published your book? Is the Ozark uh, published your book or who published um, it? Or self-published? No, no, it's self-published. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. But, and, but what do they think about it? Do they, do they sort of see this as a sort of unique thing that you're sort of following their mother that you've, there's somebody's writing books again that's because it's very reminiscent of what Dolores was doing that what you're doing I'm really good friends with Julia Cannon and I know she's very excited she's very supportive she's just one of the kindest people I know 
And she also um, developed her a course called Soul Speak, which is basically there to help people when they have issues with their body. They can learn what's causing this issue based off, off of many uh, sessions that her mom did. Wow. Well, maybe we'll have to do a panel sometime. I'll get my other QHHT people and we can have a, maybe a panel and, and go live and have people on the internet come in with questions and stuff because uh, that'd be I, great. I, I find it fascinating stuff. I know um, Gasta, who's my assistant, I met her. She had some some weird dreams and I would actually go to her and I would say to her, okay, ask him this, ask him that. And that's what I find is important is if you've got a link into the source or you can access it, then um, it's sort of like a shortcut. Okay, let's go mm -hmm. get the answer rather than trying to rationalize it. Or there are people who are tapped into the field, which I think you are. And I think it's incumbent upon people to listen to people who are in the field. It's like, you always hear this in UFOs. We need, you know, they're collecting UFO sightings. And I always say, until you talk to the people who are interacting with the intelligence, you're, you're never gonna learn anything. You can right. record all the lights in the sky you want until right. you talk to the people. And that's why I see, I'm honored to talk to people like you who actually mm -hmm. are beyond that. And you're actually are talking to whatever this intelligence is. And, and it's gonna be very accurate information compared to what you get on the street. And I've had my own experiences, not like yours, but um, where you have the, maybe I can even ask you this, sense of of certainty that when you get this material uh people will ask me well how do you know it's how do you know it's real how do you know it's real and i'd say i really don't know i just know for sure that what i was told was the way it is and that's it's like why, this. that's why i thought i would share just a few clips in that um yeah. at at laughlin when i go there in november for that ufo conference because when you listen to it you can hear it right away there's yeah. so much energy that comes through and they're just very short clips but you can definitely hear it and you can see what i mean when you yeah. hear those little clips but um thank you for doing what you're doing and sharing all this information for, well i guess we, we've got our little jobs to do and it's sort of like that's why i always say to people that in my my opinion they would say well what you know what to leave with and i always say it's always the same thing that if you realize because i had a major download in 2017 where i was given 24 things and one of the things was is it one life if it's one life then that's one world with certain rules and stuff like that but if it's multiple lives everything changes and so it was the <laughs> idea that if, if multiple lives is true then there's like a 99 percent chance that we agreed to do something when we came here we didn't just say oh i'll come back again with no plan that we planned to do something so what it comes down to is figuring out why did I come here? What am I supposed to be doing? And am I doing it? And that's all that matters. It doesn't matter what anybody else is doing because when you get let, when you leave, as Michael Newton said, you only get asked one question, how to work out because you plan. <laughs> and, and so people have to just realize it's all about me. It's all about what am I doing and how am I contributing to the world? And you have, I think you mentioned right at the beginning is this idea that you want to help people. And people will say, uh, why would the aliens come to help us? And I'll say, because other than this kind of this world where everybody's rape, pillage, kill and steal, whoever's got the most toys when they die wins outside that it's all altruistic. Everybody's altruistic. And we have this idea that, you know, we're not here to help people. We're here to help ourselves. But when you look at uh, everything else, how nature works or a beehive works, how the body works, all the cells work together, or even your football team. I'll use the example of the Tampa Bay. I, the, the reason they win the Super Bowl is because everybody's doing exactly what they're supposed to do. They don't go in the huddle and say, don't tell me to block. I'm not going to block. I'm going to do whatever I want. And, and that's the way it works. It's this oneness principle that everybody works together. Everybody does what they've been told to do or what they, what they sense they're supposed to do. Everybody works together and the world gets better and the universe gets better. And more magnificent is that oneness concept, which I think 54% of all experiencers, I, I think, claim they're talked to about oneness which was not what you expect. You'd be like, where's your government? And, and you know, this kind of stuff. And, uh, you know, these questions, they never ask about that. But they talk about, you know, oneness and, uh, you know, that kind of stuff. I love what you just said. I love it. Yes. Beautiful. <laughs> Definitely. I think we're on the same page. We're just doing a, a, a little bit of different thing. I will do what I can to promote your book. Maybe we'll get you up in the, in oh. the, the top thing because the, the most of the people I, I have a, a large audience, but a lot of the people that are watching now are people who understand this concept because I started in 2012 
And I can basically say that in 2012, I couldn't have spelled the word consciousness. I couldn't have cared less. Nobody was talking about consciousness. And I got told this is what it's about. And the world has completely shifted in nine years. Absolutely. It's wow. a completely different world. And people like you are coming forward and, and this, uh, this message is coming out and everybody's telling the same message. So I really right. appreciate and we'll do what we can to promote you. And I'd love to have a, um, a, a, a conference, uh, like a, a panel. We do a lot of panels when we go live on the internet. And I'm sure if people knew that there was going to be these people on there, you know, three practitioners, um, they would, uh, there'd be lots of questions in terms of different things, which would, uh, I think, help move the message. And I think that's what we're to do. That would be fantastic. Thank yep. you so much. And I'd just like to say for all those people that feel so alone, you're not alone, especially if you, you know, remember these things like this weird time in Atlantis or Lemuria, or you have a phobia of the water and waves that so many of us are back here again from those time periods. Wow. And it's a great time to release that trauma. How, how would they contact you if they want to uh, share with you or? They can go to my website, uh, www.theholistichypnotist.com. It's theholistichypnotist.com. Okay. And um, you're going to be in Laughlin, Nevada, which is a, a very interesting conference. Uh, it runs every year. And I think they'll love you there, especially when you get, um, you know, people like Jacques Vallée. He's sort of, he made the first move away from, you know, this sort of technology and ETs and nuts and bolts and this sort of thing to this idea that it's much more complex. And I think that's what you're describing is that the world is a much more magnificent and amazing place than people could ever imagine. And that we have the honored position of being sort of on the leading edge and sort of peeking through the crack and seeing uh, all this other stuff. Whereas majority of people are basically living lives of quiet desperation, just taking their kids to soccer practice and paying the bills and stuff. And they really don't, they don't have the opportunity. And I guess that's our part of our thing is to put it out there. And when the time is right, I guess you'd agree, people will see it. It's, we don't have to convert everybody. Everybody right. has their goal, everybody has their mission. And uh, when their time is right, then uh, they will pick up the message. Well, I wrote that book so people who are seeking could find peace. Beautiful. I really appreciate what you're doing, uh, Sarah. And uh, I will let you know when we, whenever we get this panel set up, I am pretty sure my assistant Desta will I probably even have questions. She'll probably be contacting you because um, she had a, a vision that kind of disturbed her. She does a lot of channeling as well. And she got sort of a, something that happened that was against everything that she'd been told for years. And she's busy trying to figure this out now. And she's- Oh, I wanna know. <laughs> she, she goes in the field almost every day. She's, uh, and she does uh, the QHHT. So uh, thank you again for uh, being on and uh, good luck. And uh, we'll do what we can to promote you. I think you, you're doing very, very valuable work and people need to know that um, th this is true. This is a message. And it will help people um, help themselves and make the world a better place, which is, I think, what it's all about. Thank you so much. Thank you.